Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2, where we're with the virtual gourmet John Mariani and my partner John Coleman. How are you doing, guys? Doing well, Art. Hey, John. Good to see you again. Nice to be back. Uh, as our favorite uh, food and travel writer, you have uh, probably noticed a phenomenon that I have noticed, and that is that restaurants now, of course, uh, and for many years, have had um, the waiters have a, a portable electronic tab. They don't write anything down or they don't have to memorize it. Uh, they, they tap the pad and it, the order goes on auto automatically, instantly into the kitchen. Yeah. Well, the same thing is true when you come to pay. They give you the electronic pad, and on it is not only the total of your bill, but it's the options for the tipping. Right. And I've noticed that the tipping, they, have, they will have none. That's good that they, they offer no option. In other words, you can refuse the tip. But the first and lowest tip is now 18%. Yeah. Now, I can remember, I'm old enough to remember, 10% was a tip. And then 15% was a tip. And uh, now it would appear that universally, whoever programs these uh, pads, 18% is yep. the lowest tip. So something like 18, uh, 23, third, 28. Well, percent. even before the pandemic, I think, and before the electronic machines, there were some restaurants that automatically put in 18 or 20%. But I, I noticed with some of these electronic ones, yes, there is for no tip, but you have to choose it. You have to opt out of the uh, yes. up the, the default tip, which might be 15 or 18 uh, percent. Yeah. Although, unless I've had lousy service, I think I've always given 20 percent, probably because I was in the food service industry when I was in high school and, and college. Uh, but uh, yeah, things have changed quite a bit. But tipping, tipping is, as I've heard, I don't know, uh, a, an American phenomenon. They don't tip anywhere else in the world. Uh, well, some places they do in the rest of the world, but it is rare. Um, throughout Europe, they do not. Uh, in England, they do, although they often do or uh, put a 12% tip service charge onto the bill in England. Uh, you are not supposed to tip in English pubs, although some Americans do. Well, Americans have screwed everything up. Okay, so but to answer your question, yes, for some reason or another tip, which does not mean to ensure promptness. I don't know where that came from, but it's just not true. Um, <clears throat> Americans uh, tip everybody and everything in sight. You know, oh, the fireman, they hate say burning down my house, here's $10. Um, the person who works somebody for shoes, here's $10. It, it, it gets a little ridiculous. But why that came about, I am not at all historically sure, but it is, it is a double-edged sword. It's a way of showing your appreciation or your lack of appreciation. But by the same token, it can mark you as a cheapskate or a lavish spender. By the way, waiters never, never mind when you overtip. John <laughs> Gotti used to talk to the, uh, with the former plumbing executive um, who for some reason went to jail and died there. Um, he used to tip 100% on the check. So if he had a $500 meal, he'd need $500 for the waiter. So he got really good service um, all the time. Uh, but let, let's turn to the rest of the world and why they do not tip. Waiters in the rest of the world, not entirely, not universally, but it's considered a pretty good job. I don't mean a guy in a cafe in Paris who just you know gets these little... Uh, you know, I, don't know, I don't know how much he's making, but they get a salary. They get a salary based on what they are hired for. When you get a bill in Paris or Italy, um, it'll say service included, servizio incluso, okay, or service compris. It's built into, not on top of the bill you get. So you see, you get a bill for 100 euros. <clears throat> they don't add... 10, 15 more euros onto it. It is already built into the <clears throat> price of the um, steak that you ordered. So the steak cost you 40 euros. The service is built into that. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. And what is more, it's never, ever 20%. 
it goes, I would say about 12% is what the service charge is, okay, maybe 15. Now, should you leave on top of that? If you are an American, you probably will. And, you know, I, I, I ask this all the time of my European friends. I said, well, hasn't it kind of become de rigueur for you guys to tip? And he says, no, he says, you're not at all. Um, if I have a big deal meal, and if I had had special service above and beyond what one expects, if the sommelier recommended open decanted uh, the various wines and so forth, yes, then I might give him 10 euros. Or this wonderful waitress who I think is just the bee's knees, I might do that. But otherwise, no, I have already paid for the service. It's the same in hotels. The service charge is built in, so you don't have to tip everybody in sight. <clears throat> maybe the guy who, <clears throat> maybe the doorman, you know, give him a, a euro. But they don't really expect it over there, except for the from the Americans. Uh, and they get well paid for what they do. So, uh, you know, everybody complains about their own salaries, but uh, it's something you just not, need not worry about. You say, oh, yeah, so what is that uh, pour moi they have? <clears throat> One of those little coins that the French are always leaving at the cafe. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> what that is, if the bill was nine, nine euros and 50 cents, cents, okay, you leave 10, okay? That's, that's all. You leave the extra change, which is sometimes like pennies or nickels a dime. Just leave it, you know, you know, round it off. Same with a taxi. You get in a taxi and it costs... Uh, two pounds, uh, five uh, shillings, whatever, you just round it off to three pounds. That's all. But it's 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 not a enforced kind of expectation of tip. And uh, I've never had anybody in Europe or a cab driver in, um, in London <clears throat> ever say, you know, cheap bastard. Can I say that? Um, called cheap for not leaving a tip because because they really don't expect it. They'd love to have it, but they really don't expect it. Here, it becomes a big deal problem. Uh, again, because people want to tip everyone. So when you're talking about a meal you've had with your friends, <clears throat> say it's a $500 meal, 20% of that is a, that's 100 bucks. And if there's four of you, that's uh, 25 bucks each, which is not so bad. But when you start to, the trouble here is when you add on the wine, and this is the big bugbear, Let's say the wine alone cost $150. So that could be just two bottles of wine or some guy wants to spend $300. It used to be, as you suggested, John, if you tipped it all on the wine, it was 10%. You know? uh, it was never 20 Now it's expected, oh, no, don't be a cheapskate. The bill was $800. Give them 20% of $800, even if half of that was for the wine. In which, let's face it, they didn't do anything um, with it except open the bottle and then yeah. they get around to pouring it for the rest of the night. So um, we do tend to over tip in America. But here's the uh, here's the clicker. Danny Meyer in New York, a great restaurateur who runs uh, he also owns all the Shake Shacks uh, around the country. Um, he said the back of the house people deserve to make more money because the waiters are making so much money up front. So we are going to just slap on a 20% tip that you have to pay. You don't have to if you don't want to, but what's going to, going to be built into the bill, and some of that is going to go to the back of the house. Well, the waiters are a little angry about that, thinking they weren't going to make so much money as they used to. But you know what? It was the customers. I want to leave a tip. I want to show that I'm a good guy. I don't want them to think I'm a cheapskate by not leaving anything. So he had to, he had to throw the whole idea out. So now you go to a Danny Meyer restaurant like Union Square Cafe, <clears throat> Gotham Bar and Grill, and leave whatever you want. You know, it's kind of interesting. Um, I was in, uh, uh, I had an assignment in Australia for about a year and a half, and uh, they were typical uh, uh, of what you describe in Europe, which is uh, no tipping was not expected. Uh, in fact, it was frowned upon. Uh, they would look at you as if you oh, it must be an American. But what was interesting about it is when the minimum wage here, and this goes back about 20 some odd years, when the minimum wage here was, uh, let's say, five or six dollars an hour, it was closer to 15 dollars an hour, the equivalent of it, because they were getting medical benefits, they were getting retirement benefits, they were getting a whole bunch of things, okay, that made it a, 
uh, more like a, a, a salary job. So you're right, they were being paid uh, a living wage with uh, significant benefits. And uh, the only place for a tip um, was at the end of the bar in some places, in a, s a small restaurant, there might be a, a tall uh, uh, glass that would, might have been used for beer otherwise. And uh, you could see that people might have left an extra dollar on the way out. As no, Mr. No Golden, I remember growing up in the Bronx, there were Bronx Irish bars that had a jar at the end for the IRA. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You know, I, I'm sure that money never got there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, the problem I think we have in the United States is that our system of tipping is baked in now. It has been institutionalized. And I, John, you can correct me if I'm wrong because you know the industry. But I had heard about five or maybe even longer ago that waiters, uh, that the IRS knows that waiters are getting tipped. And so the IRS, what do you call it, assesses every waiter uh, something like 12% above their above their income mm -hmm. for the tips that they assume the waiter is going to get. Therefore, if you don't leave a waiter at least 12%, they're losing money. Imagine a waiter being taxed an extra 12% and you leaving a 10% tip. That money, that extra money is being taxed, but it's coming out of their pocket. Now, is that true? And it seems to me a devious, devious thing. Well, remember that a waiter <clears throat> is only making $4 an hour, okay? So a little, quite literally, waiters just, that's a, that's a service price. They make $4 an hour. And every because they get tipped so much. So, you know, to kind of do the math, they're making much, much more than 12%, the average waiter, in order to have any kind of income whatsoever. So the IRS may in fact try to do that, and they do, but you know, a lot of it is in cash, which they obviously prefer. The credit cards changed everything because the money's right down there. You know, $25 tip on there. So and that all goes to the IRS. So you can't fiddle around as much with your income as you once did. Um, I was at a restaurant the other day that only accept cash. Well, what does the IRS do then um, with the whole restaurant uh, and their income? So you know, they, everybody plays the game, even our former president. That's true. That's true. Well, it's been an interesting conversation. And uh, John, uh, here, let me uh, let me get 10 bucks out for you. Oh, I uh, thought you were going to give a tip on the third uh, race at uh, Aqueduct. <laughs> That's another kind of tip. Oh, yeah. okay. thing I, I should add is that it, it um, used to be um, standard that you tip the maitre d'. Okay. Well, the maitre d' is simply the guy who says, ah, oh, Mr. Coleman, party for two. And he says, Francois, table 16. Yeah. Basically, that's all he does. But people started to tip the maitre d' because they wanted him to take care of them with a good table and, and treat them with uh, special uh, excessive service. If that's what you want, do not give it to him up front, which marks you as a patsy. But as you leave... And if it was superior service, thank you, Francois. I was very nice to you. I will be back Thursday, and I expect you to remember me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a Captain, John, just as a, a further this a little bit, mm -hmm. some restaurants, some finer restaurants, have a maitre d' and a captain. Mm -hmm. And a waiter and a busboy. Yes. Yeah. And, and That's the only, yeah, it, and it used to be, there were some credit cards that used to have tip for captain, and tip for waiter. Um, I haven't seen that in a very long time. And it would only be in America, of course. Um, and in that case, you used to tip the captain maybe 10% or 5% and the waiter 15 Now, remember, the waiters or, or all the service personnel, all those tips are shared with the busboys and with the bartender. If you order drinks in the bar um, and you get your martinis, uh, the bartender will get a cut of the tips that go to the waiter. They do pool it. And God forbid you should try to cheat your own fellow employees on that. You will <laughs> lose your job. Uh, the union will come after you. You will be hanged in effigy and all sorts of other things. So, uh, yeah, that 20% that you are leaving the waiter, not every penny of that goes to him or her. 
All right. Right now, we're going to save tipping on cruise ships for another video. As, and also perfect. for another one, and I've been biting my tongue during this entire thing, is we're going to save cow tipping for a whole separate episode. <laughs> and okay. cow tipping, a different but, kind of. But uh, so John, leave us with a tip about tipping. Uh, that is a good rule of thumb for everybody. I'm sorry. Did, what, what did you, did Can you, you ask leave me? us with a rule of thumb about? We know that outside of America, you don't tip; it's included, unless it's something extraordinary, extraordinary service. But in America, uh, what 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 is tipping? What what is your general advice on tipping? I would say that, largely speaking, people are leaving fifteen percent minimum. Uh, many people, especially in cities, New York, Los Angeles, are leaving twenty. And then there are guys I know, oh, come on, leave 25%. Well, I mean, why not 30%? Why not 50%? Why not be a John Gotti? Well, if you have John Gotti's money, go right ahead. But um, that's that's foolish. There's a wonderful movie, Love in the Afternoon, with Gary Cooper and Audrey Hepburn. And yes. he's a very wealthy um, uh, American businessman who always stays at the Ritz in Paris and has things his way because he's always seducing women in suite 402 when he brings the uh, the uh, violin players up and the, uh, the champagne has to be iced just so when they know it exactly 10, 15, they have to leave and so forth. And at the end, there's a scene in which he's exiting and there's like 10 guys lined up outside the Ritz door and he takes that. In those days, the bills <laughs> the bills are about this size for the franc, you know, 100 franc notes or something. And he goes, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Monsieur. Thank you, Monsieur. Thank you, thank you. And um, but that was that was a comedy. I'm sure there are such people and such men. But what you really want, what you do with a concierge, a concierge he has a good point. <clears throat> Shouldn't leave without the concierge. Is the guy at the front desk who makes arrangements for you that you otherwise don't want to make for yourself or can't make for yourself. Now, if all he does is call up a restaurant and makes a reservation for four people. There's no reason to tip the concierge on your way out, but if he gets you a reservation at a restaurant that is very difficult to get into on a Saturday night, if he gets you an audience with the Pope, if he orders up a limousine for you that, uh, you know, then, yes, then you want to tip the concierge when you leave in an envelope uh, accordingly. Um, I was in Milan once, which, boy, this guy just bent over backwards. They were having a, a, a transit strike, as the Italians do. Uh, the Italians always tell you when it's going to be over. It'll be over by 9 o'clock tomorrow. But I got I need a car at 9 o'clock, so there's no subway, no trains, no buses, not even limo drivers uh, or Uber guys uh, could not even come. This concierge was able to get me a private car driver, and um, well, he was well-deserved a tip. We've covered a lot of tipping. John, thank you. My pleasure. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.